Now, for anyone who is serious about um, about drawing the head, you should. There are certain things about the skull you should know. At least know certain proportions, because the proportions of the head, for the most part, are you know dependent on the structure of the skull, all right? And um, which is pretty much the same with drawing any part of the of the, the human body, okay? Because the bones are fixed, so because of that, certain measurements are fixed as well. So you can get an idea of how to gauge how the different parts of the body relate to each other and where to find things and also have an idea of um, the important landmarks and how to look and identify um, surface forms. Alright, so the skull is really, really, really useful and good to be familiar with and have some basic understanding of. Alright, so um, let's see, I'm going to draw a side view and a front view. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's say um, we begin with a circle like that. See, I'm sketching it really lightly, so you may not be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm just sketching out a circle here. Um, so, and as I go through, I'm going to, you know, have you know some of the proportions as well. So I'm pretty much just drawing a circle. I put a, a, a center line, always use a center line um, to get things a little symmetrical. Um, I so I'm basically I'm bisecting the circle vertically and horizontally, right? Now this line is going to pretty much represent the bro line or where the bro ridge is, that little um, ridge-like feature right above the orbital. Okay, so um, I'm going to use say close to the top of the circle to be uh, where the forehead begins, and the same measurement down is going to be where the base of the nose would be, which is pretty much right below the um, the nasal opening, okay? And the same measurement down is going to be the chin, all right? Now, of course, this isn't necessarily um, uh, the exact measurement of a skull, but it pretty much, there are relationships that pretty much are, you know, dead on for most people and it gives you a general sense of how the um the skull is okay so you can pretty much use this to draw a skull you know from imagination as i'm doing right now um <clears throat> now so what's next now this entire distance is going to be like i'm thinking of the head as well and you know the eyes are halfway between the um the top of the head and the chin so i'm going to make a little horizontal line here right now, right where the this is the line for the eyes, so I can pretty much sketch in the orbital. So I'm assuming that the orbital is going to be... See, I'm making that line be pretty much dividing the orbital in half. And you know, the orbital is really like a box like this, with a little tilt, like that. So it's all center. So one on the left and one on the right, and I'm trying to make them be symmetrical, all right? So we can already see, you know, how things are kind of mapping out. Now, right above the orbital, and see, I'm making it look like a box, but it's really rounded, but I'm just doing this just for, you know, for sketching sake. It makes it a little easier to, to capture stuff. So now I can, this is the line where the nose ends, so I know that the nasal opening is right there, all right? So I can even use a little triangle just to hold that space in and then later on kind of fix things. Now, an interesting thing that I've noticed that helps me to sketch the, the skull pretty easily is that the middle of the, the orbitals lines up with where the, um, it's called the maxilla or the upper jaw, okay? And you'll see how I'm gonna sketch that in. And um, right at the base of the, the nasal opening, this, the cheekbones align with that as well right here. So you have something like this. See that? So you can see it's starting to form itself out. Now, um, at the base of the, the orbital, where the, or the base of it, like right here, what happens is this cheekbone, or this zygomaticus it's called, it pretty much ends at the, the, the at this highest part ends with the lowest part of the orbital. So I can use this as a border, so I know that it goes out like that. Okay? And
and um, the top here, this is like uh, that little ridge right um, at the outside of your eyebrow, right here. It goes around the orbital like this. And then it goes out like that. Okay, trying to make it symmetrical. Then the the widest part of the head occurs right at the top of the orbital, around here. So I know that right outside of here, the skull, the side of the skull, or the parietal bone, or the parietal bones. Right here, it swings out and then swings in like that. Yeah, and then um, it you know goes up at the top. So notice I'm passing my uh, top line just a little bit, okay? Because the bone really is shaped. The the skull from front view base its basic shape is kind of like a pentagon, something like that. Like that. All right. So now I have that out, and I pretty much have the top. Now I'm going to sketch in the um, the top. So right above the uh, nasal opening, you have the nasal bones, right there, which is pretty much like like something like a shape like this. That's pretty much it. Looks like that, and the opening is like that below it. All right. And right at the side is where the opening of the uh, for the orbitals are. So um, right up below this, you have. See, I'm rounding up the orbitals now. So you have this form on top, and it looks something like uh, like this. It's almost like a cylindrical form. Um, so how I can sketch this? Uh, it's like that. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how it is. Right here. <clears throat> All right, and um, I'm gonna round them up a little bit. Just rounding up the openings. Shade those in. Now, <clears throat> now we're at the bottom. So, what I've always used to remember drawing it is that see with this little bone here, where, where the the zygomaticus meets the 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 cheekbone meets the um the brow ridge or the eyebrow bone. You can continue that line all the way around. It flows right into the outer or the lower jaw bone, just like that. And then. The outside line lines up with the outside, and the inside line lines up with the inside of the lower jawbone, just like that. Now, um, I would say uh, the line between the lips, you can just use, I usually use just a halfway mark, just like that, or slightly above a halfway mark. And then above, you know, I can just sketch in where I think the teeth are, all right? Pretty much like that, and there you have you know have a basic idea, and then right where the um, right below the lower row of teeth, that's where I usually put the um, that little corner of the jaw. And it also lines up with the cheek. See, so it's not perfect, but it definitely, um, I think it's pretty close to the way the structure of the, the, the skull actually is. And then I'll go over this in, 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 uh, in ink. But this just gives you a basic idea. And then you can just, you know, put these little forms in to represent the teeth. And 
that's a pretty easy idea, you know, pretty simple way to just sketch and get a feel for um, the proportional relationships of the skull. Now with the um, the side view, you know, I'd start with that same little circle. And I'd put in that bisection line again. Now, <clears throat> actually, I can even relate the proportions of this front one to the uh, to this one as well. So this is actually where that little bulge is, where the eyebrow um, would would be on, right? And then this would go up to the head like that. Now, it's important to note the high point of the head is actually closer to the back of the head than it is to the front, right? So now I have that line up top and I have this line at the bottom to mark where the base of the nose is and then I'll make the same measurement at the bottom just like that right now since I know this is the base of the nose I know that eventually the opening for the the opening for the, the nasal opening the base of it will fall right by this line okay and then the, the the jaws will bulge out a little bit from that little ball like this See, now <clears throat> remember that the center of the head is where the, the eyes are, so I know that that line will mark where the center of the the orbital is, and it forms like a C from the side view. Now remember, I said the cheekbones line up with the base of the nasal opening, so you'll have it like that, and it will also align with the outside of the orbital. So it looks something like that. Now, an interesting thing is when the head is level, um, this bone, the cheekbone, is strictly horizontal. And that's how you know when the head is um, at a level position. When it's looking down, this line will tilt downwards. It was, when the head is looking up, it will tilt upwards. But when it's level, it will be like this. And that's a good way to know, you know, when you're drawing someone if the head is actually tilted or not. So this line goes all the way back. So I'm going to make the center line be where I'm going to make the ear, the ear hole fall right on, on that line. In truth, it may not necessarily be so, but for my convenience when I'm drawing, I usually use it like that. So this goes straight up to where that is. And, and how I can, you know, this is really helpful because the ear hole is very close to where the jaw is. That's why when our ears your ears is like stuffed up, you can like move your jaw and it will loosen it because the articulation of the jawbone is right close to, it's right next to where the um, the ear hole is. Like that. And then as I said, this swings in line, just like here, it swings in line with where the jaw is. Then that, you know, you can have a little opening like that right there. And this bone right here is called the mastoid process right this little bulge you can feel it right below your either ear and this is where that muscle that turns your head is connected to the one that goes all the way down here and then um you know the, the rest is just putting this just putting the teeth you know and that's uh pretty much so i'm just going to go over this now and then um, render it in ink so you see how i do it